he was allowed to walk free even after being convicted. And now the question remains, where is Adam? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Adam Emery. Viewer discretion is advised. It's August 30th, 1990, Warwick, Rhode Island. Around 9 p.m. that evening, Adam Emery and his wife, Elena, they went out to get some food with a fr some friends. They go to a seafood restaurant. They have a rather uneventful time. They just sit there, they talk, have great conversation, and then the night's over. Adam and Elena get into their vehicle and they begin to make their ride home. Well, all of a sudden, a car sideswipes them, kind of sort of crashes into them, but then speeds away. After a, a few moments or so, Adam at this point is like heated. He's extremely pissed off. Elena says she points at a, a car, a Ford LTD, and she's pointing at it and saying, that's the car, that's the one that just sideswiped us. So Adam begins to speed up to this car and kind of gets to the side. In the other vehicle, driving it was 20-year-old Jason Bass, and he was there with a couple of his friends. Adam has the window rolled down, and he's now screaming at this guy, Jason, in the car, saying, hey, you sideswiped me. Look at the damage you just did. Meanwhile, Jason's like, what are you talking about? He's completely confused. He has no idea what this guy is screaming about. But Adam is like demanding that Jason pull the car off to the side of the road. But Jason just thinks this is a lunatic that he has no idea what's going on. And so he tries to get away. But then Adam Emery and his vehicle begins to speed up and he manages to get in front of Jason's car and forces Jason to stop the vehicle. Adam's getting out of the car now to go confront Jason. While he's doing that, Elena takes a knife out of somewhere in the car, gives it to Adam and say, just in case for protection. So now this crazy lunatic uh, is screaming with a knife in his hand and he's approaching Jason in the car. Jason manages to kind of back up a little bit and that's when Adam basically slams his hands on the hood and almost begins to like grab onto the hood of the car. So Jason's trying to speed away, but as he's doing that, Adam with his knife, he basically lunges it into the driver's side of the car and he manages to actually pierce Jason directly into his heart. And this causes him to crash the car into a tree. It's, a, it's immediately a very bloody scene. I mean, blood just kind of sprays everywhere and Adam's now covered in blood. 911 is called, but when the ambulance arrives, Jason Bass is pronounced dead at the scene. When police arrive, Adam Emery is just sitting there on the steps of another of this person's house. He doesn't know this person. They gave him a glass of water to drink. He's covered in blood. And when the police approach him, he just says, yeah, I did it. It was me. But he was trying to say it was all because of this big, you know, that he had sideswiped him and he, the Jason had started this kind of whole altercation to begin with. He tried to flee the scene. Police are able to actually confirm pretty quickly that it wasn't Jason's car that sideswiped Adams. Based on paint transfers, it wasn't the right guy. Elena pointed to the wrong vehicle and that's why Jason was so unbelievably confused and afraid of this random lunatic, why he seemed to have no idea what he was rambling about. It was all confirmed that it, it wasn't him. Adam Embry went after the wrong guy. Even still, you don't just stab a guy for sideswiping your car. I understand you can get mad, but you don't really, typically you don't lunge a knife into a guy's chest over it. But even more tragic is the fact that this was mistaken identity. It wasn't even Jason. Adam Emery is apparently this well-behaved, good guy. He had never been charged with a crime before. He never seemed to give anyone any red flags or anything like that. But he's charged now with homicide. And while he's on trial for this murder, he is completely just dead-faced. Like, it just, he doesn't seem to be bothered by the events that transpired. Uh, with with Jason. He doesn't seem to care. He shows zero emotion. And on November 10th, 1993, Adam Emery is found guilty of the second degree murder of Jason Bass. When the verdict was read, 
out of memory, completely didn't care. Uh, he also never showed any signs of remorse. He never once apologized to the family. He never admitted he was wrong for going after the wrong person. He was just an asshole. I mean, complete, he's a murderous asshole at this point. Right as the verdict is, is read, he can be seen on, on camera going to his wife, Elena, who, by the way, was not charged with any connection to this case, the murder, this murder portion. And you can see him talking to Elena. They're having a conversation. And unbelievably, he's actually released on bail pending the actual sentencing. The sentencing hearing was going to be a month prior. And they actually let him go. After he's just been convicted of second degree murder, they let him free. So the timeline of what happens next, they leave the courthouse. They're observed leaving the courthouse, Adam and Elena Emery, at 3 p.m. At 3.35 p.m. are confirmed to show up at a local sporting goods store. They buy uh, sweatsuits, they buy athletic socks, they buy 80 pounds of strap-on exercise weights. When the, the clerk rang up the whole total, he would later tell police that Adam was like really angry over the amount, like he couldn't believe he was paying this much money. Then they are observed, Adam and Elena, observed at a restaurant at 4.45 p.m. Many witnesses can confirm this. Then they arrive at the Newport Bridge, which looked over the, I'm gonna say this wrong, I'm sure, the Narragansett Bay. That'll be the only time I try to say that. At 4.50 p.m., they are observed by witnesses standing on the bridge's walkway. They're standing next to their car. By 5.15 p.m., the car and the couple are not seen at the bridge anymore. People can say they actually see the car driving away. At some point after 5.15 p.m. and 6.53 p.m., they, they got back to the bridge, but no one observes the car back at the bridge. And no one observes the two of them either, because at 6.53 p.m., the car is reported abandoned on the bridge. At 7 p.m., the police arrive to confirm that the car is left there on the bridge abandoned. The engine was on, the keys were in the ignition, the lights were on, there was clothing neat, like neatly piled in the back seats. There was cash on the front seat with several credit cards that had been snipped and cut up into little tiny pieces. Adam Emery's driver's license was left behind in the car. And so based on, they also found the receipts that showed the purchase of all this stuff at the sporting goods store, including the weights. They kind of came to the conclusion, well, did Adam and Elena plan this to, to kill themselves because of this conviction. And that's why maybe they got these weights to like weigh them down in the river. So they end up dredging the river, they comb it and they are thoroughly search it. They find nothing, they find no traces of them. When police interview the clerk at the sporting goods store, when they found out that Adam was like visibly really upset over the price of everything, they thought that was strange because if there was a plan to commit suicide, why would he even, why would he care how much something costs? Like it wouldn't make any sense for him to be that mad. When they interviewed witnesses at the restaurant they were seen at, they, the witnesses said that the couple was like having a really happy conversation. They see, they were smiling, they, they seemed happy. One of the, the investigators decides to kind of question people at the courthouse right before they had let Adam go. And there were witnesses who said they saw Adam and Elena having this kind of deep conversation and they found out that this was actually captured on camera thankfully and they had someone they brought in a specialist who was who could read lips so they had them watch this footage of adam and elena talking and what they believe elena said they believe she said quote we're gonna do what we originally said you promised me end quote and it sounded to them like this was a planned thing, that they had planned something. Was this a planned suicide or was this a planned staged suicide for them to go on the run? Nine months goes by and they have no luck. There's nothing found, no traces of them. They're not seen by anyone. There's no reported sightings of them. They're just gone. A warrant is now put out for both of their arrests and both of them are considered fugitives. Well, there are some fishermen who are fishing in that nearby bay when they pull up something grotesque. It is a severed human foot, which essentially was just a bone. And on that bone was a sock. 
The sock, they would find out later, was the exact type of sock that was purchased by Adam and Elena at the sporting goods store. It doesn't mean that that's definitely one of their feet, but it just goes to show like, well, what are the odds? But what was weird is that a forensic anthropologist examined this foot and determined that it came from someone who was no taller than five foot seven, and it came from a white male. Well, Adam was six foot one. So they didn't even know if this foot actually belonged to him. They searched that part of the bay again. They searched very thoroughly and they came up with nothing. So the FBI, the police, they all had these posters out. Basically, if anyone sees these two, we need them. We need them to be apprehended. Approach cautiously or don't approach them, but call the police or the FBI if you see them. But they still don't really get anywhere with that. They were getting some tips from time to time, like, oh, we think we saw Adam by himself in places like Italy. They saw Adam and Elena together in other European countries, but none of those were ever confirmed. On August 30th, 1994, there were some more fishermen in that same exact bay in the sort of similar area to where that foot was found. Well, this time they pull up a human skull. They are able to bring it back to the forensic anthropologist. I think they had dental records of both, and they confirmed that the skull belonged to Elena Emery. She was very much dead. But it was really just her skull that was found, and that was it. So once again, they searched that part of the bay, they searched all over that bay, still nothing. They find no more bones, no signs of anyone else. They don't know how Elena died. That's the other thing is they don't know if was this actually a double suicide and they both went into that that bay. And so maybe it just, you know, with currents and everything and with the animal life there in the bay, is it possible that they, their remains were just sort of chewed up and eaten on over the course of time and you're just never going to find them? Or the other theory is that Adam just killed Elena because it's way harder to make two people vanish. Uh, way easier to do that with just one person if you're only depending on one. So there is a thought that Adam just said, well, screw it, and killed his wife to make, to make it harder to find both of them. And now he's on the run. Or did Adam also go into the bay on that day and died? They have continued to search for him, but in 2004, they would end up having Adam Emery declared legally dead. However, as recently as 2018, he is now back on the wanted list. So I don't know if that means they have information that suggests he is still alive or what, but he is now considered once again a wanted fugitive. There is a chance that he is dead and that this was just a one last hurrah by Adam and Elena. You know, maybe they had this wonderful final date night, I guess, right? They go shopping, they go get some dinner, they go look at the bridge and take a nice little sight. And they said, okay, we're gonna go kill ourselves off this bridge now. It is possible, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel inclined to think that Adam killed Elena to make it easier for him to get away. And he's just out there somewhere. Hey, maybe he's watching this video or maybe he's watching anyone's video on this. Hi, if you're out there, uh, maybe you should turn yourself in. You know, you did a bad thing and you need to be held accountable for it properly. Why, I don't understand, like, I, I understand the legal process, how people can be bonded out and all that, but for God's sakes, like, put slap a freaking, like, a monitor on his ankle or something. Don't just say, hey, you're convicted of second-degree murder. Now, go on, you get out there, kids, and you have fun for a month before we sentence you. Like, that's stupid. That's dumb. But I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules, okay? But Adam Emery may be out there somewhere, and perhaps you have seen him. Perhaps you know where he is. Perhaps you've been in communication with him. Somebody somewhere out there has to know, and perhaps that someone is you. So if you have information, you are encouraged to call your local FBI office to report anything you know. As far as you know, when it comes to the FBI, I think you can still report information anonymously, not having to say who you are. Just gotta say what you know, and he needs to be brought in if he is still alive. I mean, this man has killed one person for sure. Maybe he's killed two. God knows how many others if he is still alive. So if you know where Adam Emery is, 
please contact your local FBI office and help bring him in. And he needs to be held accountable for what he did to Jason Bass. Because as of right now, Jason Bass has yet to get the justice he rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case, True Crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry, Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe, give this video a like, follow me over on my TikTok pages. I have a couple different ones, so uh, check those out. The links to those are in the link tree in the description of this video below. The links also pop up here at some point in the beginning and at the end of the video. Also in the link tree below, you'll find my merch store. We sell shirts like this and hoodies and stuff. We do ship all over the entire world. So feel free to check that out. Hey, Adam Emery, if you're out there, you wanna make one of a, make a purchase, just put your name on that purchase and your address. I don't know, not so you can get caught or anything, but maybe do it. Hmm? I don't know, last ditch effort. And lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email. Send it to, uh, the email is listed below in the description. Uh, all I need to know is the name of the case, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to the list. The list is humongous. I pick my cases at random. I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but we'll get to it eventually, I promise. But yeah, that is it for this video. This story, True Crime Maruni, Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. So we will see you for the next video. Ta-ta for now, True Crime Aroonies.